Hello, my lovelies. How are you doing today? I am Makeda Valletta, also known as the Renaissance Amazon. And I'm live on my IG page. I will save it and repost it to my YouTube. Make sure you follow me in both places because I don't always post the same thing in both places. Um, in case you're unfamiliar with me, I'm a lot of things. I'm a trainer, I'm a dancer, I'm a scientist and an artist, all having to do with the body. Um, my art form is dance, very much a student of black dance. And when you're a student of black dance, of course, music and dance um, complement each other, okay? Can't have dance without music. I am a native New Yorker, born and raised in Harlem, and I'm a hip hop fan, okay? I'm an 80s baby. Um, Definitely love hip hop. And one of the things that, there's things that, but also have criticism of hip hop, okay? And um, there's things that, that, you know, there's things now that I love. A lot of people criticize hip hop and say all the music now is trash. A lot of people are criticizing the female rappers, which I really um, get pissed off about because the female rappers right now are seeming to take over. Like, there's so many of them. <laughs> like, there's at least 25 female rappers right now doing their thing. It was never like that before. It was never like that in the 90s. And I feel like when women do things, they do it differently than men. Like if you watch a basketball, there are people who don't like watching women play basketball. The women's game is different. Um, but a lot of times it's because basketball is male dominated, just like hip hop was, or is, or was. Um, and so they're always comparing women to men, okay? The women aren't gonna do things like the men. The women aren't gonna play basketball like the men. And the women aren't gonna rap like the men, okay? And, you know, I feel like there's a lot of toxicity in hip hop when it was male dominated. It was a lot more disrespectful to women. Um, you know, who, I mean, I don't need to see dudes all the time. You know, I love Wu-Tang, but I don't need to see 50 dudes on the stage with Tims and hoodies. I'd rather see a bunch of pretty girls, okay? Um, dance was always a part of hip hop from the beginning. The South brings in, you know, the Southern beats, which speaks to your hips. New York doesn't really have the beats that speak to your hips. That's the South, okay? I'm gonna go down. Um, and so, I appreciate the, the, the female side of things. I like hearing women talk shit. I get tired of hearing men talk shit all the time. And um, so with that being said, I just wanted to do a quick video about this uh, Megan and uh, Nikki beef, okay? Because people who've been following me and listening to my videos for a while, you know that I'm Team Megan. I made a video years ago. This might be back in like 2018, at least 2019. Um, it might have been 2019 when I made the video about being Team Megan, okay? I think that she's great because she's a, you know, she was in college when she first came out and she blew up. She was famous and she finished her degree. She encouraged other young ladies to finish their degree. And she didn't get a bullshit degree like communications. I think it was like in healthcare management or something because she said she wants to open up like low income healthcare facilities or something in Houston, which I think is very commendable. Um, I haven't seen one male rapper do that, okay? And I haven't seen one, do any of these male rappers even have a degree, okay? Did it half of them even finish high school, okay? You know, Kanye made an album, high, college dropout or whatever, you know? So what male, what male rappers have ever done that? There's a different male rapper that gets shot, you know, or killed every other month or dies from some health problem, okay? Um, but the, the killing and all of that. So, um, to me, I'm all about make love, not war. To me, sex and sexuality and sexiness is always better than talking about killing people and putting them six feet under and shooting up the block and stupid gang stuff and people having shootouts at at funerals and making fun of people's death. It's disgusting. But anyhow, yes, I am a Meg fan. I love the fact that Meg talks her shit. She, you know, talks about what she wants sexually. She's tall. A lot of people in entertainment are short, the men and the women. A lot of times you see thick girls, they're short, you know. Megan's are tall. And I feel like every time you see powerful black women, people want to call them a man. People call Michelle Obama a man. People call Megan Thee Stallion a man, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I feel like she intimidates a lot of people, okay. Um, I feel like she intimidates a lot of people. Somebody said they want to interview me for their YouTube channel. Okay, message me in my inbox and send me a YouTube channel. And we can discuss that. Um, you know, and I feel like men like to control women's bodies and sexuality. Because for one, on the one hand, men can say what they want. But men like seeing booties shake. And they like looking at pretty half-naked or naked women. 
the numbers don't lie. Even my own videos. When I post videos, if I put on a sweatsuit and I talk about something, I'll get no views. If I put on a bikini, then I start dancing, I'll get thousands of views by the morning. Okay? And I'll try hard to get people to pay attention to other things, but people, dan I dance in a bikini, it'll get lots of views. Okay? And so if you're an artist or you're anything that you're trying to draw attention to your work, you have to give the people what they want as well. I mean, some people might already want to be naked and that's fine. But maybe you don't want to be naked all the time. Can you pay attention to something else? No. People pay attention to the pretty girls who are half naked. And that's why the beer ads have the girls in the bikinis. It's not a conspiracy to push a thing. It's, they're, they're, it's a business and they see what sells. And sex does sell. And women are even more sexual than men. You know, a lot of times women are protecting the male ego. But women desire sex, think about sex more than men. And it's hard to please women because most men, they see something, they get excited, they want to jump on it. Most men don't take their time to warm a, body, warm a woman's body up and make her really want it. And trust and believe, sex is better for men and women when the woman really wants it. Okay? Um, but most men are too rushed for that. And... Uh, but then they think that, you know, they're supposed to be enough, and it's ridiculous, right? So I love someone like Meg who talks her shit. And it's like, when Meg got um, shot by Tori, she was, I don't know, in her early 20s. What are you, and her mother passed away, her dad passed I can't imagine being 22, 23, anywhere in my 20s, and I don't have my parents. I can't imagine having my parents now, you know what I'm saying? I still need them. So I can't imagine being that young. No parents, grandmother's gone, I don't think she has any siblings. And then you're famous and you're out here on this, you know, which is a treacherous world. I can't imagine that, okay? And to me, when you're young, you're, you're not supposed to be taking life too seriously and trying to get married at 23. You should be having sex and enjoying things. And men have a very unrealistic idea about women. It makes no sense that men shame women that they had sex with. Like, they'll have sex with a woman and then shame her like she's trash. But it's like, first of all, you had sex with her. <laughs> You sought her out and wanted to have sex with her. And now you want to say she's ran through, she's this, she's that. But men are hypocritical because men don't like difficult women. Like, no man, men can say what they want, but a lot of them don't like women that's going to be super difficult and making you wait five months and take them on 20 days before they have sex with you. And you as a man don't even know if you guys are sexually compatible. Okay? Um, because as a woman, like, I don't want to waste a whole bunch of months and months of talking to somebody and I don't know what the sex is like, what the dick is like, like, I don't. Because sexual compatibility is real. And it's like, if I spent months getting to know you only to find out that I'm not interested in what's in between your pants or connected with you in that way, I just wasted time. Right? Um, yeah, her mom was her best friend too. You're right. Yes, her mom was her best friend. Her mom was her manager. Her mom was at all of her interviews. Okay. We all talk about sexual healing, okay? Sex can be healing. People always assume, first of all, I hate talking about promiscuous women. What does that mean? Does promiscuous mean a woman who has sex, when she has sex, who she wants to have sex? What does that mean? How does somebody actually define promiscuous, okay? Now, we all are in control of our own body. And we should all be seeking pleasure. And when people ask women sometimes, have you had a one night stand? It's like, I don't know how, if a woman says she has it, I don't get that because there are definitely times in my life when I've had sex with a man where it was whack, okay? And I didn't, he wasn't touching me again, okay? Um, there are times they give men a second chance and sometimes they do better in the second time, but if they don't, absolutely not. But a lot of times they don't get a second chance. And Meg talked about that. You know, she said, you talk about my body count, but most of your, um, with, I don't know her exact words, but she said, basically, you talk about my body count, but most of you, your dick doesn't deserve seconds or whatever, you know, and if you look, I'm very much into, I don't have my books in front of me, but I'm very much into, you know, I'm a sacred sexual educator as well, so I'm an artist, I'm a dancer, um, I used to model for photographers, but um, do I count the whack bodies? I don't count bodies, that's to me, counting bodies, that's what you do when you're 19 or something, I'm too old for that. <laughs> That's like trying to count how many hands I've shook. Well, I don't like shaking hands. It's nasty. How many people I gave a hug to? You know, people say, oh, you pick up energy who you have sex with. You pick up energy from who? The pe anybody you touch. You can pick up energy from somebody you take a dance class with or you're in a room with, okay? You can pick up energy from people all kinds of ways, not just sex. 
And I don't remember every single person that's been in my house or every single person that I've hugged or every single hand that I've shaked or every single person that sneezed in the room that I was in, <laughs> okay? Who's counting? Like, to me, you have a pretty lame life if you're sitting there counting. That's number one, okay? Um, but, you know, it's just the, the, the standard because if all these men are going to get praised for being with all these women, who are the women that you're having sex with if all of the women are just having sex with a few people? Let's really be real. The math is not making sense, okay? Women like sex. I'm not even going to say women like sex. As much as men, we like it more than y'all. And we don't get satisfied nearly as much. So as a woman, if you really are seeking good sex, you might have to go through a few dudes before you find it, <laughs> okay? And some dudes be salty and mad because they can't get it again. And then you want to start dissing the woman because she don't want it again. Because you suck. And so someone like Megan, that's what happens. A lot of these men desire her. They can't take rejection. A lot of men are whack. Megan talks about her requirements for what it is you, you need to be able to do to please her. And a lot of men, you know, men say that they want women that know what they want. But at the end of the day, a lot of men are intimidated by that. And especially a tall woman talking her shit. Someone asked me if I have an OnlyFans account. I do not have an OnlyFans account. I was on OnlyFans. I'm no longer an OnlyFans. I'm now on Loyal Fans. Um, I will write that uh, page below. Um, that has a lot of my artwork, like my body art stuff, uh, photos, and some videos and stuff. But I have another page I'm going to just for dance. Like I had an OnlyFans page as well that just had. I'm sorry, somebody called me. Hopefully I'm back. Yeah, I had a page that just had dance videos and um, of course that's not up anymore. So I'm going to start another Loyal Fans page just for that. So right now I have one Loyal Fans page and I'll have a second. So I'll post it below on my YouTube. I'll post it below here on Instagram or hit my inbox, whatever. Um, so yeah, so for me now, okay, so being um, from New York City, okay, like New Yorkers, we don't just... I don't, we don't just fuck with people just because they're from New York, okay? Nikki is from Queens. I think Nikki is super annoying. I've thought that for years. One of my good friends used to um, be manager, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he's somebody that most people know who he is. And this is like years ago. When Nikki like first came out and she first blew up, he was telling me what happened. This is before people even knew about Safari, okay? He told me about Safari when nobody knew who Safari was. And how she treated him and how they knew each other from high school. And they had this rap group together. And she treated him like he was a servant. And nobody knew that Nicki Minaj had a man until they broke up. But she treated him like trash. And he told me how insecure Nicki was, right? I know a girl that went to high school with Nicki too. Her high school was two blocks, like about three or four blocks away from mine. And we were a year apart in age. So I know people who went to school with her. And they said that she was super insecure. And her and her, did her ex-manager uh, who... She was with before she got with Young Money. They said she was super insecure about her flat ass. Like, super insecure. Okay? And she got the stuff. That, she didn't even have a BBL. She got, like, them butt shots from back in the day. Okay? Which is really bad. Okay? So, Meg has a real booty. Meg's booty is all natural. And Meg can dance. Meg can do things with her booty that is really difficult. And I'm telling you, as a booty dancer myself, I'm not, I'm not a twerker. I'm not good at twerking. I'm not good at bounce from New Orleans. Um, but I can't shake my ass. I just can't do those are particular styles that to the regular person They just think oh ass shaking is ass shaking twerking all ass shaking is twerking. No, it's a particular dance and this Megan Exemplifies the black girl. Okay booty dances, which is very different than Caribbean ones And I can't do the black the the when I say black girl. I mean black American, right? Um, it is very difficult to do and it's very healing. Okay, I have videos where I talk about how ass shaking is medicine but to be able to make your butt cheeks do these things that Meg does is amazing. And people criticize that when it's good for her health. It feels good. It's good for her mind-body connection. It's good for whatever man or woman is looking at that and turned on because it arouses sexual energy. And sexual energy is healing. right? And if we talk about how sexual energy is healing, Meg even being sexual and having sex um, during the time that she was, you know, a few years ago, 2020 is when she got shot. If that time she was doing that, you know what I'm saying, that's also healing. People always are focused on the negative side of sex. You know, like, oh, she's disrespecting her stuff. Like, are we all supposed to be prudish and sitting here twiddling our thumbs and having sex with two people in our whole life? Are we all supposed to be doing that? That shit is stupid. 
Okay, and especially when somebody is young. You're, you're, you're trying to discover what it is you even like and need. You know, like, there's, when you, as a woman, when you're in your early to mid-twenties, you might, um, you might have sex with people that, you like, when you're younger, I remember being younger, and I was always picky. But at the same time, um, there are people that I messed with back then that I would never do that now, because now I'm a lot more picky about what I want. And it's like, if you don't got it, be gone, okay? You don't got the parts I need. You don't got the skills I need. I'm not doing it, okay? Like, um, but sometimes you're younger, you know, and you also, you learn through experience, right? So anyhow, Nikki, to me, was always super obnoxious. You know, all these different characters. She's, you know, this British accent. But, you know, my friend did tell me, you know, he told me she's really insecure about her butt, um... And that, but the story of what he did to him, to his, uh, to her old manager, her team, was really grimy. And I remember when I heard that story, I remember thinking, damn, that's a hard pill to swallow, what she did. Like, she really is not a good person, okay? And, um, Nikki's always acted so entitled. I can't stand people, no matter how talented you are, her and Kanye, I can't stand people always acting like somebody owes you an award or you didn't get an award, like... You know what I'm saying? Mad at Cardi. The whole reason why Meg is mad at... The whole reason why Nikki is mad at Meg is because Meg made a song, WAP, with Cardi. And WAP was way better than the Hot Girl Summer song that she made with Nikki. Nikki collaborated with Meg first, Hot Girl Summer. That song sucked. Okay? And then Nikki... And then Meg made a song with Cardi, uh, WAP. And WAP was the shit. And... When Meg first came out, people kept trying to ask her about different beef and Cardi and Meg and I mean Cardi and um, Nikki, and Meg made it clear she never wanted to pick a side. Meg was cool with everybody. She wanted to be cool with everybody. She's always been fun. When she got shot by Tory, people kept calling her aggressive. You can't find one video where Meg was aggressive. Meg was always the fun girl, encouraging people. I remember when when I first found out about Meg, she was in California in a bikini and it did like this beach cleanup, and encouraged people to come to the beach. In the bikinis and clean up the beach in California. Um, she, you know, finished her college degree, encouraged people to go to school, increased the enrollment in that school. Okay, these are all commendable things. And we're sexual beings. Who talks about sex? So what? Meg has no tattoos. Okay, no tattoos. Tattoos are bad for your health, and I'm sorry, they're hideous. I can't stand looking at women with tattoos all over their body. Meg doesn't have any tattoos. She's a natural beauty. Okay, and um, Nikki's out here just you know been hating. Like when she first, first of all, she copied off of Kim. Okay, that's another thing my friend told me. He was with her that she was obsessed with Little Kim. She did every single photo shoot Little Kim did. She did a duplicate of it. But when she came out, she refused to give Kim her props. Beefed with Kim. Okay, she was a youngin beefing with Kim, and now she's older. Beeping with all the young girls. Beeping with Lotto. When I like Lotto better than Nikki. And Nikki, I have to say, she is talented. Yes, she is. But, you know, she might be talented doing a freestyle or whatever. I don't think she makes the best songs. I think, like, like Cardi makes better songs than Nikki. Nikki might be a better rapper, better lyricist than her own. But this is the business. So you want to make songs that people like. This is not the street. This is not battle rap. This is a business. And so you have to have a team to make you good songs. And Cardi's team, Cardi makes good songs. Okay? And so, to me, for Nikki to be making fun of, you know, or talking about Meg's dead mom is just across... It's just crazy to me. Because Nikki's mom is still living. Your mother can die at any second. Nikki's mother can die tomorrow. And you are... You have the nerve to come out your mouth talking about this girl's dead mom. That shit is disgusting to me. And Nikki was very contradictory, calling uh, Meg Bigfoot and she only got, you know, one good foot and all of that. But at the same time, she's saying that Meg is lying about getting shot. Um, make that make sense. You know, um, Nikki calls Meg broke, but then she claims that she paid to get her songs where she got them. You know, she seems jealous because Meg is with Rock Nation. And Meg, I mean, Nikki used to be cool with Beyonce. But 
Now, Mega School of Beyonce, is Nicki mad at her too? Like, it's just she's so immature. And her fans are really disgusting. Nicki's, Nicki's husband is a damn ex-con. Not only did he do this, 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 this rape thing when he was a teenager, but also he went to jail for manslaughter for like seven years. So the dude's an ex-con jailbird. You know, he was outside just a few months ago waiting for Offset on video with his little hood rat friends waiting outside of a war ceremony like he was going to jump Offset. Okay. Like, Nikki married a hood rat embarrassment. And then Nikki's brother is in jail for uh, molesting a young girl. And she was supporting him. So, to me, I don't see how Nikki can win a battle. And then she's going and talking to Kelsey and talking about... You know, uh, Meg lied. And I made several videos about Meg. Um, first of all, Meg not telling Gail King who she had sex with. So what? It's nobody's business who anybody has sex with. What does that have to do with um, Meg getting shot? Meg got shot by Tori. Whether or not she had sex with him, her, or whoever else, what does it have to do with her getting shot? It doesn't matter. And women aren't in the business of talking about who we have sex with. Men do that a lot more. And men even lie about it. But men do it a lot more. But Tory Lanez never took the stand. Um, her her ex best friend Kelsey never took the stand. Said she had PTSD. But then they say that Meg lied on him. If I did, if I was accused of shooting somebody and I didn't shoot them, I could take the stand. She didn't shoot herself. The doctors have X-rays and showed that she had fragments in her foot. The doctors can't lie like that. So the fact that people just, you know, support Tory and this free Tory, I'm seeing this dude, Phoebe O'Foreign, rapper from um, Brooklyn, you know, I hope that dude ends up in jail for something, because he probably will. Um, like, it's just disgusting and ridiculous. But when a black man gets shot, we're all supposed to feel sympathy. I, I, I haven't seen anybody make a fun of a black dude getting shot. Maybe... Um, Soldier Boy made fun of um, Young Dolph getting shot at in in, uh, in um, L.A. or something or wherever he was at. But for the most part, people don't do that. But Meg, a woman, got shot by this little dude, Tory. I made a whole video about that, so I won't get into it. But Tory is nothing but a delinquent. He has a whole history of being a delinquent. In the industry, he has a history of being violent with men and women. Before he was in the industry, when he was in high school, he was suspended from school like 65 times. If you got suspended from school over and over again, you are a bad kid. And if you talk to teachers about students like that, they'll tell you that students like him will end up in jail. Or not here. And that's exactly what it is. So it's just ridiculous the hatred that people have towards women who like stand up in their sexual prowess. And I know it because I've been living it my entire adult life. That's the reason why I resonated so closely, you know, with Meg. You know, um, it's when you choose to be a woman who owns your sexuality, stands up in your sexual prowess, doesn't hide it, lets it shine for the world to see, you're going to attract a lot of hate. And you're going to attract hate from men and from women, okay? A lot of women hate it too. And religion has taught people that sex is dirty. It's dirty. And so any woman who's sexual, she's dirty and unworthy of anything. And she's just trash. And she deserves to be disrespected and treated like crap. When sexy women keep the world going around, a lot of people, a lot of men would be miserable if it wasn't for a sexy woman that they get to look at and see and in their personal lives enjoy. Because, no, I'm sorry, but most men don't like a prudish woman who's all uptight and not comfortable with herself. And You know what I'm saying? So shouldn't you be thankful for women like that? Or indifferent. Why the need to control so much? Why the need to control a woman's body so much? You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why so many women lie and hold back what it is that they truly want, what they truly desire, because they're afraid of being judged. Okay? Now, when you're a woman who's not afraid of being judged and you don't give a fuck and you own it, then nobody can shame you. And I love that for Megan that she's just like owning that. She said, she said, I'm not scared of dick. Little Kim said that back dick back in the day, right? And what dude wants a woman that's scared of dick? Please tell me. So it's contradictory with what men say they want. And that's why women should never, you know, live their life based on what men say they want. Just be yourself. And a lot of women naturally are very sexual. A lot of women naturally want to be cute. You know, you have this rapper Scarlett out of, um, out of the Bronx. 
people will say she's too masculine, she's too aggressive, but then when the girls, you know, are twerking half naked with the bikini, now they're too sexual. And Scarlett has put on some sexy outfits and people are, some men are acting like there needs to be an intervention. She's a young woman. Women like to be sexy. Just look at what happens on Halloween. I'm not even a Halloween fan. But all the women on Halloween want to be some sexy, something sexy. Because they feel like that's the one time they can do it and they can dress, you know, uh, they can dress scandalous and not be judged. Because it's Halloween. When they, when they know good and well, they want to do it all the time. But they associate dressing like that with being disrespected. No man has the right to disrespect a woman and put his hands on a woman. I don't care what she's wearing. I don't care if she's walking butt naked outside, greased up in glitter. It doesn't give you the right to touch her. You can look all you want. It doesn't give you the right to put your hands on her. If I had two pit bulls, I'd be outside every day walking my dogs with their little string bikini. And if it was legal to be topless, where I'd be just as naked as possible with my two pit bulls, letting dudes trip on their feet. But you can't come over here and say shit or touch me. You can look all you want. But see, and that's the reason why a lot of women hold themselves back. They're afraid of being attacked by men. If women didn't have that fear because we were trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons training, had some pit bulls, a lot of women wouldn't give a fuck. But it's men that act like it's just to attack a woman or rape a woman because she's showing her body or she's talking about sex. Like what happened with Sukihana. Yeah, you ask permission first. That's exactly what you do. That's respectful. It's just like with Sukihana, like when, um, I forget what that dude's name that was, um, um, that singer who was like all on her in public and kissing on her when she was telling him to stop. And people were like, well, how is Sukihana rapping about eating a man's ass? And she's mad that he did that. It don't matter what she's rapping about. It don't matter what she's showing, how she's showing her body and what she says. It doesn't mean, doesn't give him the right or no other dude the right to come over here and put his hands on a woman if she didn't give him permission to. And that's religion that teaches people that, that women are the evil temptress. So she brought that on herself. No, men need to get control over themselves. Now, back to the topic. I'm Team Meg all day. Okay, I think that she's a great person. Doesn't mean that I like every single song she makes, but I don't like every single song anybody makes. But I think that she has good character, good energy. I love what she stands for. And I think Nikki's a jealous bitch. I think Nikki got a bunch of botch surgery. She's on drugs. Okay. Now, yes, Meg had an alcohol problem. She said she did. She's depressed. The goddamn girl lost her mother and her father and her grandmother before she was like 24 years old. Okay. A lot of people will be doing worse. But Meg still finished college. Got that degree. Nikki's over here popping pills and doing coke. And she's a whole mom and in her 40s. That's a lot worse. Okay, so I'm just going to end that with that and just say F Nikki and all her crazy ass fans um, who are really disgusting because Nikki was live the other day and I went on it and Nikki was just going on and on and on about her dead mama, her dead mama, Lana, her dead mama, just saying her dead mom over and over again. Like, I don't see how anybody could hear that and think that's cool. And then some people say, oh, that's hip hop. And that's another thing I want to say. That's one of the toxic things about hip-hop. Because I've never been into the battle rap. When you say it's hip-hop, that's like the battle rap shit. And I never liked that. When people just going back and forth, dissing each other to death. That's corny. And that's when hip-hop was founded, that's not what it was founded on. When it was founded, it was actually positive and uplifting. It wasn't about breaking people down to the white meat. Okay? And hip-hop is a lot of things. But that shit is toxic. And that's how a lot of people ended up dead. Okay? So I'm going to end that there and just say I'm Team Meg all day. If you want to go back and check other videos I've done about Meg, because I've done several. People love to hate her. You know, I'm a critical thinker. I'm always going to love my, my tall, dancing women who are comfortable with their sexuality, um, who go to school and get degrees, okay? I'm always going to be for that, okay? Over a woman who got a bunch of goddamn surgery, got ass shots, you know, stiff as hell, can't dance, married to a sex offender and uh, someone convicted of manslaughter, married to a damn multi-time ex-con, has, you know, supporting a brother who's a pedophile. No, Team Megan, okay? So I'm done with what I, I got to say. And I'm sure there's other things that I want to say that I didn't think about, but I'm about to go to the gym. And I'm going to leave that there. 
And I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to talk about Meg's video Cobra. Um, I didn't. I meant to talk about that because I'm just gonna make this brief. Like those of you who follow me know I'm a dancer, and one of the things I, I study a lot of dancers from the African diaspora. But one of the things that I study that has had the greatest, most profound impact on me has been Haitian folklore. And there's a dance in Haitian folklore dance called Yanvalu. Yanvalu is a dance. It's a serpent dance. It's connected with serpent and water. And of course, serpents. You always see eggs associated with the serpent. For those of you who've been following me for a long time, you know that I used to teach a class with nani eggs or yoni eggs, which are crystal eggs that women work with vaginally, internally to help not just strengthen the vaginal muscles, but get more control over the vaginal muscles. And it's associated with that kundalini energy, arousing that kundalini energy, which is that sexual energy. Kundalini energy is also that serpent energy. And that kundalini energy, sexual energy, is also healing energy. It's transformative energy. Shakes, it's, 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 shakes, sh snakes shed their skin. And snakes are on the medical symbol of every country. Healing energy, transformative energy, sexual energy. Sexual energy, spiritual energy, healing energy, all the same continuum. And Meg is embodying that in her cobra song. Her video, she has the, the, the cobra and she has the egg. And I feel like a lot of that symbolism goes over a lot of people's head. She's deep. And I would rather see her dance than stiff ass Nikki. So... That's, and Nikki is too old to be acting the way she's acting. I feel like if she was 25, she'd be too old. But at 41, going to be 42 this year, she's too old. Okay? So, um, yeah, I'm going to end this here. If you like this video, please like it, share it. Follow me on YouTube, The Renaissance Amazon. If you're on YouTube, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Okay? I tell you, I've got, I got 77,000 plus people on, on, on um, YouTube. Follow me on Instagram because there's a lot of things on Instagram that I post that is not on YouTube. And they keep deleting my Instagram pages, okay? My, my Instagram page has been deleted, deleted like twice at 25,000 already. So to my YouTubers, come join me on Instagram, okay? Look below. I'm going to write my Instagram page below. It's the Renaissance Amazon 9 with an underscore in between each word, okay? I'm not, I'm not editing any videos or putting it all on the screen. Just look below the underscore renaissance underscore Amazon underscore the number nine. Okay? The renaissance Amazon nine. Underscore in between each word. That's how you find me on IG. And um, yeah, guys. Um, have a good day until I see you again. All right? <laughs> Bye.